Today, amongst other things, I'll explain to you what's to be expected from SpaceX's Starship program in the near future. What about it? Go for launch. Or go for launch. Let's light this candle. Ignition sequence start. My name is Felix and I am your host for today's episode of What About It? And as always, there has been a lot going on in the space industry lately, so let's dive right in. Starship Updates Without a doubt, SpaceX is creating something unique in Boca Chica, Texas. The Starship development program has high ambition. Developing and building a fully reusable space launch system has never been done before. All Starships and Super Heavy Boosters are designed to land with no wasted components. So no dropping orange tanks, expensive engines or solid rocket boosters into the ocean. This poses challenges and demands new solutions to solve problems never faced before. For this, SpaceX has built their famous South Texas launch site located on the US Gulf Coast. It's a private rocket production facility, test site and spaceport. And it's growing fast. SpaceX has chosen to not build at Kennedy Space Center arguably the most important spaceport in the world, located in Florida and run by NASA. Of course, there is no official information on why SpaceX chose to separate their Starship development from Kennedy Space Center. But the most obvious one would be that here SpaceX is undisturbed. They can go their own way and do not nearly have as much interference as they would on the crowded space coast of Florida. Starship might just be so different than traditional rockets that it just doesn't fit into Kennedy Space Center. This new kind of rocket does not only bring change to space, it does the same on Earth. This kind of development would just not have been possible in Florida. And this is the latest progress on one of the most ambitious projects that the space industry has ever seen. What you see here are Starship prototypes serial number 8 and 9 sitting in the mid-bay at the Boca Chica construction site. These two Starships are the successors of a long line of test candidates in a very short amount of time. SpaceX is using an iterative design process, meaning that with every serial number improvement is made. It's an approach that is necessary to be able to find a solution to the problem of making rockets 100% reusable. Whereas serial number 5 and 6 that have recently been moved into the not even finished high bay use 301 stainless steel for construction, serial number 8 will be the first to utilize 304 stainless steel. And as the iterative process continues, the alloy will continue to evolve as well. So again, this is just one small step towards the final design. Everything is constantly evolving. What you can see here is the Starship serial number 9 thrust section with attached legs. SpaceX is starting to use wheels to roll the thrust section around at the construction site. At first this might not sound like a big deal. But back in February, Musk stated that he wants to attach wheels to the Starship legs in the future to tow them to the launch pad. Is this the first iteration of such a process? As always, tell me in the comments. The wheelbases do look sturdy, but the wheels certainly don't look like they could handle the trip all the way to the pad, so the final version will likely look different. Since today's episode is focused on future development, let's look at the Starship legs for a moment. These are Starship serial number 6's legs after landing. They're exactly the same construction as serial number 9's legs. They work like a crush block. The holes you can see are manufactured in to make the structure collapse on a hard impact. On the Starship legs, this is done in two stages to make absolutely sure that the prototypes do not hit the landing pad with the engine skirt. These are the version 1 Starship legs. Musk recently stated that Starship's V1.1 legs will be around 60% longer. One of the reasons for this decision likely is to give more room to the engines on landing as Starship serial number 8 and onwards will utilize three Raptor engines. Nick Henning was busy again making a landing leg animation speculating on future development. Starship's V1.1 legs will be 60% longer and likely more reusable to give SpaceX the option of doing faster tests. For this, a dampening system and some sort of auto-leveling support would be needed. The underskirt flip-out technique will likely be the same as on the current version 1 legs though, as any different design would need modifications on the engine skirt, which right now can't be seen on any Starship prototype. According to Musk, Starships in the end will get the version 2 legs, which won't just be a slight improvement as indicated by the number. He said that Starships will get Falcon legs, but capable of landing on unimproved surfaces and auto-leveling. It will be very interesting to see what the SpaceX team comes up with here. Falcon-style flip-out legs would likely not fit under the skirt, so they would need to be attached to the outside. 
Legs are a very important subject for future Starship missions and so we should see the development rather soon. Maybe even sometime early to mid next year. In preparation for upcoming Starship Serial No. 8 testing, SpaceX has taken the thrust simulator out of the test stand recently used for Serial No. 7.1 and installed it into the other test stand again. Yay! On September 12th, Musk tweeted that Serial No. 8 should be done with assembly included flaps and a nose cone within a week. This week has already passed and Serial No. 8 is still sitting inside the midbay, waiting for the parts. The reason is unknown, but the test stand modifications are a good indicator for SpaceX readying the launch site for the upcoming static fires and the roughly 18 km flight, hopefully in October. One possible reason for the serial number 8 delays could be that Musk wants to make very sure that the first 18 km flight goes as good as possible. Eric has recently made a nice animation showcasing the problem Team Boca Chica might be facing. It's a parody to SpaceX's famous video How Not to Land an Orbital Rocket Booster. It showed the trouble SpaceX went through before they stuck the first Falcon 9 booster landing and as Eric shows here, this is what SpaceX might have to go through again before they successfully land their first Starship. These higher flights will focus on the skydive down to the landing pad and the belly flop maneuver right before the landing. As a response to Eric's tweet on September 15th showing a successful serial number 8 landing, Musk said that if Starship serial number 8 hits the ground hard and craters as he called it, serial number 9 and 10 are close behind and that high production rate will allow for fast iteration. So every failed attempt will directly impact further development of hardened software. Also it will be rather spectacular seeing a Starship crater. Let's just hope Boca Chica doesn't turn into something that looks like Jezero Crater on Mars. Kaboom! Liked the update so far? Then click the like button, subscribe to the channel and maybe even consider becoming a patron to give some vital support. Link is in the description. The team is working relentlessly to provide you with updates twice a week thanks to SpaceX's mind-boggling speed and with your support it will be much easier in the future. Thank you. Seeing the development live, being able to speculate about it and always staying informed is the direct result of the awesome work done by Mary from NASA Spaceflight, Mauricio from RGV Aerial Photography and 3D artists like Eric, Nick Henning or Casper Stanley. So make sure to follow them on Twitter and support them on Patreon. Links are in the description. And this is a perfect example of good coverage. The picture shows Serial No. 9's forward dome segment to be stacked on top of its tank section at some point. It's Serial No. 8's successor and it has many additional features again. I looked at the picture for half an hour. <laughs> In a direct comparison it becomes very apparent. Internal bracing goes further down, more plumbing and connectors can be seen on the outside. If we look at the plumbing in detail, a possible inlet for the autonomous pressurization system can be seen pointing down and next to it a large connector of some sort. Starship development in Boca Chica is fast and it's getting more and more complex with every prototype. Starship Serial No. 8's aerodynamic surfaces have recently been installed and there are lots and lots more covers of all sorts on the site already. Everything now is ready for the final assembly. Progress is also being made on Serial No. 10. What you're looking at here is its common dome segment. It divides the main oxygen and methane tanks and the common dome also harbors the lower header tank used to store fuel for Starship's landing. It sits right in the middle of a Starship's tank section. SpaceX by now has very much perfected the segment approach and it gives a lot of advantages for the development and manufacturing process. Each segment can be developed separately. Each segment likely has its own team, improving manufacturing each time and streamlining the process of assembling the prototypes. It's a very unique process which is very different from the normal way of constructing rockets. The ring segment approach gave SpaceX the opportunity of handling Starship parts in a way which couldn't be done with larger parts. The end result is something completely new, something that's never been done before. A different approach can open up new opportunities and sometimes even revolutionize an old idea. A bit like today's sponsor.
Today's episode is brought to you by the Ridge Wallet. It's light, sleek and industrial. It doesn't fold or awkwardly bulge in your pocket and it seriously changed my whole pocket situation. So much for the official message. Ridge asked me to try out their wallet for free and if I'd like it to show to you what I'd like the most. I gave it a try. That was four weeks ago. I am one of those habit people when it comes to my wallets. I don't change stuff. Even though I took everything out of the old wallet and carried the rich wallet around every day. It holds up to 12 cards plus room for cash. There's over 30 colors and styles including carbon fiber and burnt titanium. It has 30,000 5 star reviews. It's so durable it comes with a lifetime warranty. You can buy it and carry it for the rest of your life and the Rich team is so confident that you'll like it that they'll let you test drive it for 45 days. You can send it back for a full refund if you don't love it. And frankly, after giving it a try for a month, I know why. There was so much stuff in my old wallet and I thought I had to have all of it with me all the time. When I changed to the Rich wallet, I thought the space would never be enough. I was wrong. One of my rules for sponsoring is to only advertise products that I personally like. This is one of them. I'll never return back to my old wallet ever again. To make the most awesome wallet switch of your life and at the same time support what about it, go to rich.com slash felix. That's rich.com slash felix and use the code felix to get 10% off today with free worldwide shipping and returns. Change your pocket situation with rich. Links in the description. Due to an absolutely overwhelming support from you, today's Patreon and YouTube member shoutout might take a bit longer. I apologize in advance. Today's shout goes to Bob Brink, Dietmar Huth, David Mahiu, Eric Richardson, Katie Daniels for Sander, Scheuch, John C. Hardy, Leon Galanti, Stuart L. Leslie, Aaron Kupferman, Susie R., Brian Hudson, George Botterini, Mark Zuckerman, Nicholas Godet, Brian Hudson and many others. You rock! I honestly do not know how to possibly thank all of you for deciding to support the show financially. All of your money goes directly into improving the show. On our 100k livestream for example, we had a fundraiser for 3D animator hardware and with your help we're on the way to another 100,000 subscribers. If you want to be part of the fast growing community, get access to our discord server, chat with the community, the team and with me in person, head over to my Patreon page or become a YouTube member here. Link is in the description. Thank you so much. The last words as always go out to my team. What you're looking at here is the intro to my 100k livestream we had on Saturday, September 19th and it was done by Alex Jobs and everyone else on my team. It shows how absolutely great the team spirit at Y is and it's a testament to what we all build together. Today's special shout out goes to Kage for saving us all on the last livestream and for being such a helpful and friendly guy. Thank you for your help. Kage, you rock. <laughs> Why do I have to laugh? I'm so happy. That's the sentence, I don't know. Hopefully in October. RGV, aerial photography and oh god, oh god, oh god. Autogenous.